Good afternoon from London. Uh, the weather is brightening up here a bit. Uh, it's been raining heavily and a bit cold here, but it's improving now. And hello from me, Dr Dermot Hudson, the chairman of the British group for the study of the Duce idea, chairman of the Korean Friendship Association of the UK, an official delegate of the Korean French Association for the UK and president of the Association for the Study of Song and Politics of the UK. And uh, this afternoon I'm going to uh, do, do a short video on the, uh, on the subject that, that many people will find quite uh, interesting and I'm going to be speaking from uh, the the heart here uh as say uh you know recently i had uh you know a bit of a, a negative experience to say the least with uh the nhs so i thought it'd be a great idea to make a video contrasting uh, the NHS with the superior and advanced socialist public health care system of uh, People's Korea. Now, I had a uh, health condition, which I'm not going to bore people with going into uh, now. Um, and, uh, you know, I made an appointment uh, with a GP at uh, my local clinic with a lot of difficulty uh, and went uh, went in and they couldn't uh, solve the problem so I was referred to a hospital. Uh, the only thing was I had to wait seven months for the appointment, yes, seven months and what is worse in, in the UK is that often uh, you cannot get in too easily to see an NHS GP. They have an awful system where you phone up, you wait uh, two hours on the uh, telephone uh, and then you give your symptoms and then if you're lucky a doctor will ring you back. Uh, very poor in, indeed and of course uh, you know it's all right for the rich because they, they can afford private medical care. And, you know, this uh, contrasted a lot with my own experience of, uh, you know, the uh, healthcare system in people's career. And uh, back in uh, February 2019, uh, you know, I became a bit unwell during a, a visit and I was taken uh, to the People's Friendship Hospital in East Pyongyang. And, you know, I just went straight there, you know, I was taken there by, by car and just went straight in just like that. Uh, you know, there was no queues, no waiting, no bureaucracy, no phoning up, just went straight in. And um, also, uh, back in 1996, during the arduous March uh, era in the DPRK, uh, which... Um, you know, I have to say something uh, is greatly uh, exaggerated and falsified by the uh, bourgeois mainstream media and bourgeois academics. You know, there were difficulties in the DPRK, but uh, it was nothing like, you know, they, they claim it was. You know, we didn't see anyone uh, dying from starvation or anyone begging uh, for food. But it was a difficult situation. But anyway, a member of our delegation uh, became unwell. Uh, a doctor was brought to him almost immediately. Again, no waiting for the doctor. And it was decided to hospitalise him. And he, you know, was taken to uh, the Namsam Hospital uh, straight away. Uh, you know, put, put in there again. You know, no queues, no waiting, uh, you know, nothing like that. And he even had a room to himself and a TV in the room uh, and a, a team of doctors and nurses looking after him. And he recovered after two days. 
So that's two examples of the DPRK health service in action. Uh, now, there's a lot of illusions and misunderstandings about the NHS, particularly <coughs> from people uh, from outside Britain. Uh, it is actually um, different to uh, the health care offered in the US and other capitalist countries, where if you're not down... Uh, you know, they ask you in the ambulance whether you can afford to pay or whether you've got medical insurance. Uh, you know, it's it's not like that. But it is not actually totally free, far from it. It's actually funded uh, by uh, taxes and national insurance contributions and, again, as many UK uh, subscribers to the channel will no uh, national insurance is going up uh, in April and you've also got prescription charges of nearly £10 per item also uh, dentistry is not free and can be uh, very expensive you know I've heard of people paying over a thousand pounds for medical treatment and you know an old old gripe you know, there's a whole number of treatments that are not available on the NHS. Uh, you know, for example, travel vaccinations, they're not available on the NHS and you have to pay for them. You know, similarly, uh, COVID travel tests, you know, not available on the NHS, you have to pay for them. And there's also different hidden charges uh, in the NHS, like having to uh, pay for car parking at a hospital or to, you know, to watch TV in the hospital. And, you know, just in case people that uh, think, you know, I'm, you know, uh, attacking uh, health service workers in the NHS, well, uh, firstly, you know, I have actually... Uh, been a worker uh, for six months in the NHS, in NHS catering. And secondly, uh, the um, NHS uh, exploits its staff very heavily, uh, forcing them to do 12-hour shifts and, you know, there's low pay in the NHS. So it's built on low pay uh, and exploitation. In contrast, the DPRK socialist health care system is completely free of charge. In the DPRK, the Labour Law of June 1946 granted free health care to industrial and office workers. The DPRK decided uh, to broaden this to introduce universal free medical care. This uh, was not implemented in ideal conditions of peacetime, but in the flames of war. On November 13th, 1952, the cabinet of the DPRK adopted decision uh, number uh, 203 on enforcing medical care for the people. Universal free health care came into force on the 1st of January uh, 1953. Legislation on free health care was enacted in 1960 and uh, 1980. Moreover, the right to free health care is enshrined in the DPRK Socialist Constitution. The DPRK has a dense network of medical establishments like general hospitals, specialised hospitals, uh, hospitals and uh, clinics. Um, in uh, all localities and all units, and even at uh, factories and mines. Uh, according uh, to uh, data, there are many uh, healthcare workers uh, for uh, in in the DPRK, and uh, you know the uh, number of doctors uh, has in increased in the DPRK, for example, by 322 times in the period from 1946 to 2006. And the DPRK ranks uh, among the advanced countries 
uh, in terms of the number of doctors, medical facilities and beds for every thousand people. The DPRK has the section doctor system whereby doctors look after a given locality and visit patients so the doctor comes to see you rather than you going to see the doctor. This of course is contrast to Britain where many doctors do not do house calls and it has become uh, increasingly impossible even to go uh, to a clinic to see a, a doctor unless you're prepared to pay for expensive private medical treatment. You know, the NHS is trying to do uh, a lot of stuff online now and, uh, you know, sack, uh, you know, doctors and healthcare workers. In recent years, uh, many new hospitals uh, have been built in people's career and the health service is expanding all the time and uh, our delegations have visited um, hospitals in the DPRK in recent years in 2017, 2018 and 2019 and they're all state of the art, very modern uh, they're also very very clean, uh, you know amazingly clean so the DPRK's uh, socialist health care system is an advanced and superior one. Uh, so, you know, I conclude the video on that note. Uh, and I would uh, ask if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please uh, subscribe. And uh, we have uh, also an affiliated channel, KFA UK as well. We are also planning a number of uh, activities. We have a uh, meeting, uh, an online meeting on the 12th of February uh, to mark the 80th anniversary of the birth of the great leader, comrade uh, Kim Jong-il. And also, oh, please always... Um, check out our Facebook and Twitter accounts for details of our activities. Uh, we, uh, I do not ask people for money, but if uh, people would like to donate to KFA UK, um, you will find uh, details of how to uh, do that. And also I would urge uh, people uh, to sort of check out my author, spotlight on lulu.com which I'll put in the uh, description and lastly if you think this video is good please uh, share it widely thank you for listening and thank you for your continued support for the channel have a great day and goodbye <laughs>